All right, welcome to this week's lesson. Uh, we'll be speaking about transducer arrays. This is something that can tend to be a little confusing just because the names are the same and then they add one qualifier that kind of changes what the actual transducer array does or is put together in a, in a, you know, they're put together in a different manner. So let's go over each of these and I'll, I'll kind of give you some descriptions of each and then we'll, we'll actually go over each one and I'll show you exactly what the differences are. So there's a few different types of arrays we'll go over today. There's a linear sequential array and that's a switched array. We have a linear phased array, which would be a vector and that would give us a sector image. Our curved sequential array, it's a convex array, or you can also see it as a curvilinear sequential array. Kind of, they're all interchangeable there. Typically the curved sequential array is the one that you're most likely using day to day. Curved phase array, that would be a convex array and also called a curvilinear phase array. And then less common is an annular array, used to be more common. There's uh, not as many applications that we use it for because of these other types that we do use. They figured out ways to make them, you know, function kind of in the way that we need them to. So annular array, we will go over it because it it is still uh, tested on and I want you to understand the difference between the rest. So as for the arrays, you know, just think of them as a group of the active elements that are within the transducer housing. So these are the actual crystals and the way that they're arranged on the face of the transducer. So if you take a large crystal, you know, the piezoelectric material and cut it into many smaller pieces, you're going to end up with the individual elements. So each element's taken and is connected to its own unique source of electrical energy. So it, it functions individually on its own. Different electrical energy, it sends out its own signal and receives its own signal back. So each element is on the transducer head and it's, it's isolated in a partition that separates each crystal. So if you have the face of the transducer, you're going to have each crystal. You're actually going to have a crystal in its own partition. These partitions will actually um, isolate them and insulate them from the electrical and acoustical transmission from the other crystal because you don't want this interfering with this one or else you end up with artifacts. So if we go back to our types of arrays, there's a few differences that we want to know. I mean, basically linear, we understand, is going to be a square face. Crystals are going to be lined up in a line. Linear, we understand that. The curved, curvilinear, convex will be arranged more of an arc pattern. And again, we understand that. So though, I mean, though, that difference is not that hard to understand. The main real difference, though, is between the, the switched or the sequential and the phased. I like to think of them as this. The sequential arrays are lined up in a sequence. So we end up with our, our transducer with our individual crystals lined up in a sequence. So this will be our sequential array. They're side by side and the face of the transducer is large. This will probably be like four centimeters. You know, it's your typical linear transducer that you'll use maybe for small parts thyroid. They're lined up in a sequence, it's sequential. The curvilinear that you use, same thing. Large face, they'll be lined up in a sequence. You know, and again, this will probably be four or five centimeters. It's a large face. So when we think about these, each crystal is going to create one scan line on the image. So they're lined up in a sequence and each crystal is creating a scan line. So the face has to be large enough to contain enough crystals to create one line to create your complete image. That's why you end up with such a large face is you need, you know, 700, 800 crystals lined up side by side. It depends on the resolution of the of the monitor or the image, but however many actual physical scan lines you have on your image, you know, you're going to have just lines creating your image. That's how many crystals you're going to have lined up side by side. So that's why the sequential um, face tends to be large. So that's one of the drawbacks. Our phase array is a little bit different. So you'll have a small face with a few number of crystals and they'll fire in phases. So every crystal will fire 
and they'll be steered this direction. And then they'll fire again and they'll be steered here. Then they'll be fired again and they'll be steered here. So they fire in phases. So thus it's a phased array. So rather than having 700 crystals, maybe it just has 10 and it fires, you know, 70 different times to create the exact same image. So what we notice is when we have that large sequential array, our image starts off with a, a line that's the same size as the transducer because each crystal is creating a line. As opposed to our, our phased, we have a small, you know, sometimes it's a point, sometimes it's a small dash, and then we have our large image behind it. As opposed to the, this one that's, that's actually just the same size. So when we think about sequential, it just fires once, creates one image, phased, fires many times, steers, steers the beam, and creates an image. And so that's that's the main difference I want you to know between the sequential and the phase, and we'll get into each of these differences here. So the first type of array we have is the linear sequential array, and this is also the switched array. Again, this is one that most of us are familiar with. You know, it probably has a large square face. Most of the ones I see are roughly four centimeters long, you know, side, side to side. This will have its crystals lined up sequentially one crystal per scan line. Our image will be rectangular, and typically it, it will correspond to the width of the face of the transducer. If it's just a simple linear transducer, it won't have steering, and the beams will be fired, and they'll run parallel to each other, straight from the face of the transducer. The benefit of that is you have lines that are parallel at all depths. You don't end up with gaps because the, the distance between the beams is the same as the distance between the crystals and it runs just parallel. You do have divergence of the beam down, but the actual, the actual um, signal is, is the same all the way down. So the main thing I want you to see with the linear sequential is that the face is large and the image is rectangular, the same width as the face of the transducer. So just correspond these two together, the face of the transducer to the actual image. So our next type is the linear phased array. This is going to be a small face with a few crystals, but these crystals will fire all at once. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a bunch of little waves that are going to blast out, which will constructively interfere with each other and create a single wave. So then if you think about that, it, it, it will fire one one wave, and then after that it'll short, fire another wave. And because of this, one going out before the other, they're able to actually steer these into a direction. So essentially what you end up with is you have, the, have these steered waves, one steered this way, one steered this way, and one steered this way. You end up with an image that, that'll look like this. It'll start off at a small point or maybe just a small rectangular tip there, but it'll end up as a curved image because they're steering the waves in phases. So you see this will be number one, two, three, and four. So it'll pulse, 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 sending them out in phases. Of course, it's, it's faster than, than our eye can see, so it appears as a single image. We don't notice the delay. The benefit to this is you have this nice, tiny face of the transducer, very small footprint, easy to get into um, small spaces. Like, you know, if you're trying to look at the neck of a baby, it's hard to get a big four centimeter linear transducer, but you can get a nice, tiny linear phase transducer in that same spot. So that the face of the transducer, you know, it's, it's nice to have that small footprint. The other benefit of, of the phasing is that it, since it's able to, to steer the beam, you know, it's able to steer the beam in the direction that it wants it to go, it's able to also focus the beam, you know, so it can send out its waves in a nice tight pattern and it'll actually create a, a focus. So this is one of the first applications I believe of the phased array is to be able to focus and to actually change the focus, you know, 
back when we first started with ultrasound, you had a fixed focus and you just hope that what you're looking for ends up in that focus area. But with, with phasing and st- with phasing and steering, you're able to, to actually manually select the focus. So next we have a curved sequential array. So again, this is one that'll have a large face, individual crystals that create individual scan lines all across the face. And again, each crystal is gonna fire a signal, you know, and so on, that it's gonna create an image that starts off with a, a curve, a natural curve. This isn't steered. The crystals are arranged in an arc, so it naturally creates an arc. And it's going to create, yeah, a terrible image. Sorry about that. It's going to create a, a natural wedge shape image. So since our, you know, we if we have our transducer with a curved face, the beginning of the image will correspond to that. We won't need the beam steering because as these crystals fire they naturally fire in that, that wedge shape. The drawback with this is if we have our image and you imagine our beams coming out and firing to create this image, just naturally, you're gonna have more space between the beams at the back of the image than at the front of the image. As they come off, the only distance will be the distance between the crystal but as you go deeper into the image, just because this point to this point is so much larger, the thickness of the beam roughly stays the same. It diverges a bit. You end up with gaps. And if you have a structure that's right sitting in there, the machine's not even going to know it exists because it's imaging here and it's imaging here. The resolution's just not there because it, the beam the beam just does not even touch that area. So our curved phase array will be just like the linear, small footprint, few crystals. They're gonna fire in phases that will interfere and create individual waves. Most of the time we see these type on small pediatric probes where we need a real small footprint, you know, to get between their tiny ribs or maybe a transvaginal probe. You'll notice that it's long and then it has this small curved face you know just a few and it'll actually create each section of the image at a time the reason i want you to think about this is that there's kind of a trick to be able to tell whether it whether it's phased or sequential so i want to talk about the different types of arrays and kind of a trick to be able to tell which is which let's start off with our linear sequential they're lined up in a sequence large face the image the beginning of the image is going to correspond exactly with the face of the transducer, widthwise and shape. In a sequential, the back of the image will correspond in shape. You're going to end up with a rectangular back, rectangular front that corresponds with the rectangular face. If we have a phased linear transducer, they're lined up in a line, but they're phased. So the face of our tr- our image, the beginning of the image is going to correspond roughly with the transducer. It's going to be the same width and shape. But what you're going to end up having is you're going to have a fan-shaped back of the image because of the, the steering. And so these do not correspond. The face is, is linear, but the back of the image is fan-shaped. If we have our curvilinear sequential, again, they're lined up in a sequence, you're going to see that our our image is going to start off with a fan that corresponds to the shape of the transducer, but the back of our image will be a fan also. So what I like to think of is if the face of the transducer matches both the beginning of the image and the end of the image, it's going to be a sequential array. If the face of the transducer matches one but not the other, it's most likely going to be a phased array. One thing we see and is like let's say on a transvaginal, you'll have a curved face, the beginning of your image will be curved. But then if you notice, the back of your image is much more curved. You end up with this large fan. They're both curved, but the, the ratio is different because they're able to steer way out here, whereas a natural curved image can't, doesn't physically have crystals that are pointing out that direction. So this one's a little trickier, but it still pen, it still does the same, whether this is a pediatric probe you know, um, sometimes we're imaging um, 
baby uh, baby brain, you know, through their soft spine. You can actually open up that pediatric probe almost ninety to you know ninety degrees, one hundred eighty degrees off to the side because of the steering. And again, this all depends on the transducers you use, but. I just like to think of that trick, you know, just looking at the, the face of the transducer, the beginning of the image and the end of the image. Do they match? Well, that's going to tell you whether it's a sequential array or not. So let's talk about our last type of array. This is an annular array. This is somewhat of an oddball. We don't um, see them quite as much anymore because what has happened is each of these types of transducers, whether they're phased or sequential, have different drawbacks and pros, cons. What the manufacturers have done have combined them. So you can have something that, that's sequential, but it's also phased. And so you're able to adjust your focus. You're able to steer, that type of thing. Um, annular had had some, um, some pros that the others didn't. Um, when they were first starting out with ultrasound. So it's not something we see quite as often, but it is something that's important to understand even just for the history of it. So rather than having crystals in a line, you know, we're going to have our crystals basically like a target. They're, they're in concentric rings. Yeah. Sorry. I can't draw them very concentrically, but what they do is they take a single, single piece of piezoelectric material, and they actually core it out. So the face of the transducer will come from one large piece of material that they've cut into different rings. The main benefit of this is that each ring will have a different acoustic property. So before they were able to, to either mechanically or through electronics, electronically steer or focus, this transducer had many different um, natural focuses. So let's, the, the inner ring, you know, will have a, a, a short focus and diverge rapidly. The next ring will have a longer focus and diverge slightly less. The final ring will have a very deep focus. So what you see is a very unique beam profile for an annular transducer, a typical beam, you know, if it's coming off a typical transducer, will focus and then diverge after after the the focal zone with the annular you actually end up if you ha you have your rings and they they fire off but those inner rings create the focus quickly and each concentric ring focuses along the line so you have your fo your n typical natural focus here and then it it'll diverge at twice the, the, the near zone length, it'll diverge back basically to the size of the original rings. But what you get is this nice thin beam profile with minimal divergence throughout the whole area of the beam. That was the main reason the annular was popular. And what it would do is you'd have your, you'd have your annular array here and it would mechanically, it would mechanically steer. So if you've ever used a, a 3D probe that's mechanically steering, you'll feel it vibrating and it's shaking back and forth. And what it does is it, it actually creates a sector shaped image from a point. You actually have a point here, arc in the back because it, it's sweeping back and forth and creating that, that fan shape. So basically those are the difference between the transducer arrays. As long as you get down the difference between the sequential lined up in a sequence in the phased. I think that'll take you a long way. If you have any questions, always feel free to visit us on our website. Um, you can contact us there and get more information there. And I always put my show notes there on the, on the, the page that hosts this video. So subscribe to our channel. If you have any topics you would like us to visit, um, email us. I always take suggestions and um, if there's something that you just don't understand, I'd love to do a video for it. So subscribe to us here. You can visit our website and, um, good luck with your studying.